Hi there, I'm Clifford Bates, and welcome once again to Reading Rousseau. Today we're going to be looking at, again, Rousseau Social Contract. We've been focusing on, I might, you know, so therefore we're going to be, we're catching up on book book two, uh, which deals with legislation, um, and we're looking at chapter four and five today. So let's go look into this. We'll continue uh, uh, of this point. On chapter four, on the limit of sovereign power. If the state or city is only a moral person whose life, now notice the state or city, right? The state, no, he blurs this concept. Um, uh, uh, is only a, a moral person whose life consists in the union of its members. And if it's most important, and if the most important of its concerns is that of its own preservation, it must have a unit universal compulsory force to move and arrange each parts in a manner best suited for the whole. So this is this is again what he says about the question here. About the, the oops a daisy. Get the copy of my book. There he goes. Oops. There we had a little freeze camera freeze. Um, um so this idea of the, uh, in other words, it has to have enough a compulsory to move everyone and arrange the parts in the best manner for the survival of the whole. Because the purpose of this, the moral life consists of the union of its members, right? And it's the most important concern is the preservation of the members, the whole membership, the community. So it's a more uh, it's self-preservation, and it, therefore, to, to, in order to preserve itself. It has the uh, 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 ability to compel its members and re rearrange and organize the structures to, uh, for its best, uh, how to say, to achieve that survival preservation, right? Just as nature gives each man absolute power over his members, the social compact gives the body politic absolute power over its members. And it is this same power directed by the general will, which I have said bears the name of sovereignty. So this, this, this sovereignty is the power. It is the power um, uh, 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 to exercise the, uh, by the general will, to exercise uh, uh, um, it, the power over the members, right? But in addition to the, uh, 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 in addition to the public person, we have to consider the private persons who compose it and whose life and freedoms are naturally independent of it. So the public person is the body, the, the public person is the state. It is the city, the state, the entity that is composed as an aggregate construction. The private persons are the individuals who compose it. Um, um, it is a mat uh, it is a matter then of making a clear distinction between the respective rights of the citizens and the sovereign and between the duties that the former have to fulfill as subjects and the natural rights which they are entitled to as men now a ten of reader Attentive readers, please do not hurry to accuse me of inconsistency here i have been unable to avoid it uh, uh, in my terminology, given the poverty of the language, but wait, 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 wait! No, 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 this is this is forty-eight. Um, let's give you the forty-eight answer because I, I think the rest of masters is very good here, and I'm not going to play with using it on the screen i was going to do it this way sorry if I, you think this is annoying 45. um uh, it says a quote quote uh me i have uh, i have thought a hundred times when writing uh, that it was impossible in a long work to give the same meaning always the same words there is no language rich enough to give as many terms nuance and phrases as our ideas uh, uh, have changed. Uh, da, 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 he continues there and he goes, and 
spite of that, I'm per persuaded that one can be clear, even in the poverty of our language, not in the same, not in always giving the same meaning to the same words, but in doing, uh, uh, so, uh, but in so doing that each time that every word is used, the meaning one gives it is sufficiently determined by the ideas uh, 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 related to it. This is from the Emil. Uh, okay. So he used this phrase before, the idea of the poverty of language, that, that the structure of language. And said, no, no, are you, you going to see something here about sovereign, the sovereign here, and you think about this? Be careful. This, uh, uh, this idea is that there's a distinction. We have to distinguish between the, pri the, the, the collective press, the public person, and the private people, remember. And then what? It make clear the distinction between the respective rights of citizens and the sovereign. Um, uh, 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 what rights in that sense, what uh, sense of rights, what things are, are uh, and between the duties of the citizens to the uh, sovereign, right, to the body politic, and what are the natural rights to which the, they, the people are entitled, the uh, uh, citizen uh, subjects are entitled to as men, right? So these are the kind of things that are, we have to be left off. It is agreed that each person alienates through the social compact only that part of his power, goods and freedom, who, whose use matter to the community, so the common, the entity. In other words, the, 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 his part of his power, goods, and the useful to all, the general. But it must also be agreed that the sovereign alone is the judge of what matters. So the, in other words, it's the sovereign, which is the collective whole, the collective whole, the general will in that sense, right, is that a citizen owes the state all his services he can render as it uh, render it as soon as the sovereign requests them. But the sovereign, for his part, cannot impose on the subject any burden that is useless to the community. So therefore, in other words, it, uh, in other words, if, the, if it doesn't benefit the whole, the, the community, the whole, the whole community, the whole community, if it doesn't benefit the, 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 the community, the body politic to survive is needed, that it's necessary for the, it's useful and necessary, or necessary, okay? Necessary is necessary, but useful also. Now, if this is not useful, in any sense useful, then he can't command it. The sovereign is not able to command. In other words, he has this line. It, it cannot even, in other words, uh, it cannot impose on the subject any burden that is useful. It cannot even will to do so. For under the law of reasoning, nothing is done without a cause. And any more than under the laws of nature. So therefore, this idea that, that therefore, the logic of this is something necessary. So therefore, this idea, he, he seems, and this, there is a kind of Hobbesian mechanicism here. The laws of nature like this, and it is not idea, and therefore it's, it, he's, he's kind of saying it's impossible, but, but wait a minute. But it's, but the idea that you can't command something, you, and so therefore anything that the, uh, the sovereign sees as necessary must be understood as necessary for that. But what about a bad, what happens if the sovereign, uh, a, you know, but, but then again, remember he said that it once a once a faction or the, the, uh, the thing becomes a partial will, and the the, the 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 city the state ceases to be right. That's this is the uh, a, a, a very complex construction of what Rousseau is doing here. Uh, uh, in other words, that the state serve. He, in other words, you have to do every. You have to you have to. So therefore, there is a limit. See, this is the the, the radical. The, Kind of radicalist position, oh, and also the, the, the against individuals. Say, oh my God, this is collectivism, collectivism. Oh my God, oh, uh, this is totalitarianism. Well, but there's a limit. See, the Rousseau doesn't. See, the problem is you have to have a little faith in the system. If you have faith, if, but if you have no faith in the system, and you think the system is always going to go to the absurd length, then. Uh, that's the problem here. I mean, I mean, it, it, how much faith do you have in the system? If you have faith in man's nature and this, then you don't think it's that you think the laws are going to work properly and it's not going to go out chaos, and therefore it's not going to demand everything. It's only going to demand what is useful. In other words, 
you you must do whatever the city the sovereign needs for the good of all you give you have the right to do this that's your obligation okay so a citizen owes all the services he can render as soon as the sovereign requests it but the sovereigns cannot impose anything he says right here cannot impose on the subjects any burden that is useless and it can't even do that so therefore there's limits there's actual limits okay sorry about that i had a weird thing about here what is it so let, let's continue i repeat it i got we had a message i kind of stopped it for a second this idea this paragraph here he goes is agree that each person alienates through the compact only that part of his power goods and freedoms whose use matters to the community but it must also be agreed that the sovereign alone is the just of what matters, right? That's the idea we just said. Uh, therefore, that's the limit in that sense. Therefore, it's that only the sovereign entity alone decides this. So therefore, because the key is limited by this principle, it's not an absolute situation. It's not arbitrary. It cannot be arbitrary. If it's arbitrary, then the system is broken and the, you have no obligation to obey in that sense. A citizen... We did this line here already, right? It's useless to this entity. Uh, I cannot even do so in this sense. The engagements that bind, okay, that's, again, this continue repeating this point. A citizen owes the state all services that he can render as soon as the sovereign requests it, but then he says, but the sovereign is limited because, against, it's useless to that, and it can't even do so by logic. We said, we talked about this point. Now let's continue here. The engagement that binds us to the social body are arbitrary only because they are mutual and their nature is such that uh, in fulfilling them, one cannot work for someone else without also working for oneself. So therefore, it's, it's mutual benefits. You're working for oneself as well. This is the idea that the engagements that they impose must be, ben the benefits must be mutual. And that I'm working, for, and therefore I'm working for myself as well. In that sense, why it, uh, why is the general will always right, and why do all uh, constantly want the happiness of each, if not because there is no one who does not, it is not because there is no one who does not apply his word each to himself, and does not think of himself as he votes for all, right? Does it, is, is there not, uh, why is it just this right? And why do men constantly want the happiness of, of, of each, if not because there is no one who does not apply his, uh, this word, each, to himself, and I'm part of it, right? And does not think of himself as he votes for all, right? This is, I, I am one, I, I, I'm, I'm voting for all, and that means all of us are each of us, and therefore I am part of that all, right? So if I'm voting, uh, which, pro uh, which proves that the equality of right and the concept of justice it produces are derived from each man's preference for himself and consequently from the nature of man. Uh, semicolon that the general will uh, to be truly such should be general in its object as well as in its essence in other words it's a, a, a character internal character right it has to be general it has to be all everyone must share and it. it must be a common it must be common it must be shared in this sense uh, that it should come from all to apply to all. So therefore, it is something that the all has agreed on. Therefore, the democratic consent, this idea that the system has, uh, the sovereign has done tenet, what is the sovereign is a general will in a sense, which is the kind of opinion of this body who has the access to do this, that it must come from all for the benefit. Uh, and he says, it should come from all to apply to all. And that it loses its natural rectitude when it is directed towards any individual. So if we're, okay, now all of a sudden, if I direct things towards you, you're getting it. Or you're, you're doing this. 
No, it shouldn't be. Like, actually, this is the idea. This is something even someone like um, the radical kind of classical liberal um, Williams. What's his name? Um, oh, come on. I know he's black. He's the black um, cons- uh, a, a kind of conservative classical liberal economist um, who died a couple of years ago. Uh, he's, he's the kind of um, pair of, uh, of, of, of Thomas Sowell. The name is I knew it. I know it. I knew I know his name. I know it well. Um, Walter Williams. Walter Williams. Walter Williams always said that. Listen, a, a public, uh, you know, taxes are only valid. Taxes are coercion. When the government taxes you, it is a form of extortion. What only justifies it in his argument was that it was being done for the sake of benefiting everyone. The second that you extort, not for the sake of everyone, but for themselves or another group, then it's no longer just, okay? It's not that, see, the problem is one view is that all coercion is unjust. No, coercion that is take, done for the benefit of all has some legitimacy. It'd be better that everyone just would give it, but some people are selfish, some people aren't going to be, and we need to have this. We need to make sure everyone pays. Or pays their fair share. That's what the purpose of the idea is that the taxes are supposed to pay so that to ensure public goods. And public goods are the goods that everyone equally shares and or benefits from. Uh, the second that uh, a good that is only benefiting one group at or uh, uh, benefiting one at the expense of another or benefiting one but not another uh, uh, or uh, 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 this becomes destructive to that end. This is what Rousseau is kind of used to say. It loses its natural rectitude when it's directed towards any individual, determine, uh, a, a determinate object, to any individual determinate object. Because then, uh, because then, judging what is foreign to us, we have no true principle of equity to guide us. So, in other words, because it's not, if it's them and us, then we have no equity here. We have an equity in the sense that when it's us and we're part of it, therefore there is an equity here. Uh, because then judging what is foreign to us, we have no true principle of equity to guide us. In other words, we have an us, we have a common, we have a shared benefit. This is an equity. See, equity is only possible when there's a common frame of reference, Rousseau's point is. And this is what's wrong. If there's no common point of reference, then there can be no equity. Equity needs a common reference point to guide the concept of what equity means. So there needs to be an us. If there's no us, and it's us and them, there's no, and there's, there's a, this is foreign or alien or different, then there is no point of common reference, an, an us, then there is no guidance of equity. Indeed, as soon as uh, 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 it is a matter of fact or a particular right concerning a point, pardon, I'm, I'm sorry, this has been a, everything that's, uh, today has been kind of goofy on this. So, a point that has not been regulated by a prior general convention, the affair is in dispute. So, therefore, in other words, if there's no point that is not regulated by a convention, some kind of an agreement, some point of common reference, then everything is a dispute. It is a lawsuit where the interested private parties constitute one party and the public the other, but in which I see neither the law, uh, which I, and I see neither what the law must be, uh, 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 which I see neither what law must be followed nor what judge should decide. In other words, in this situation, that there's no common, there's no benefit, there's no point of reference, then there's a private interest in a public. If there's no basis of this, there, we have no, what he says, what? We, 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 uh, he sees neither what law must be followed nor what judge should decide. In this case, it would be ridiculous to want to turn to an, uh, uh, an express decision of the general will, which can only be the conclusion of one of the parties and which for the other party is consequently only a foreign private will showing injustice on this okay. Uh, on this occasion and subject to error. So therefore, this is the idea. This is that 
The second you don't, if this is not part of this group, and this is not this, this is not something that is shared, but rather what is being done is not being done. This person, this group is not being partaking in it. Then he is a something object for it, and therefore this becomes a one private will acting on another private will, and there's no law nor there is there a judge. Back to the, we're kind of in the state of Rocky and state of nature again, right? Um, And therefore, in this case, there is no showing injustice on this occasion in subject error. The just as uh, uh, thus thus just as a private will cannot ju and just okay just not ju just term judge but simply so like ju ju just as this and just as a private will cannot represent the general will. The general will in turn changes its nature when it has a particular object. So once it doesn't, in other words. Once the general will aims at trying to do it a particular thing, not a general thing, a particular thing. It, and, and this is what Schmidt would concept is the difference between a, um, a law and a command or a decree. A decree is particular saying you do this. Um, here, the general will, the argument is the general will uh, uh, undoes the, the, the words, makes a command towards a particular subject a subjective thing kind of becomes one thing imposing its will. It changes, in other words, general, when, uh, what, uh, cannot, in other words, when a private will cannot re represent the general will, the general will in turn, in turn changes its nature when it has a particular object. In other words, it, it's aiming towards a particular thing and not and, and aiming towards a particular object to, to benefit one group or to do one thing like this, right? Um, and as the general will, uh, it cannot pass judgment on either a man or a fact. Okay. This is a very interesting point here. They can't, in other words, this person is not part of this. It has a very problematic situation. When the people of Athens, for example, appointed or dismissed its leaders, awarded honors to one or imposed penalties on another, it was by means of the multitude of particular decrees performed indistinguishably from all the acts of government. The people then no longer had a general will, properly speaking. So therefore, it wasn't, in other words, he's not saying that this is interesting. He's, he, he wants to argue that decrees of the people are not necessary. These are particular acts. This this may be the uh, 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 this this the, the, the thing here might be the problem of Rousseau's language. I can see now what uh, uh, Schmidt looking at this. Schmidt would say, "Well, what what's, what's, what what is clearly being talked about here?" I'm gonna do this, shrink it a little bit, to get me, a better picture of me. I'm sorry if it's smaller, but uh, um, I was the bigger picture is like is getting like interrupting. That's it. Um, we see the distinction here. This is a very convoluted sentence in that sense. Uh, 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 we see the problems of the private in general, right? What happens here? That uh, the other private is a private party. It cannot do this. The general will, in other words, this idea that a general, a private will cannot represent the general will. And when the general will aims at a specific particular object, it's, should, it doesn't, it can't, uh, it changes its nature from the general to a particular. OK. Uh, and then he gives the example of Athens, right? When the people of Athens, for example, appointed, lead, appointed leaders or dismissed its leaders, awarded honors to one and imposed penalties on the other. And by means of the multitude of decrees performed indistinguishably all the acts of government, the people then no longer had a general will when properly speaking. It no longer acted as sovereign, but as magistrate. So there's a difference. That's what the, the difference between a magistrate. See, this is okay. This is what Schmidt uh, Schmidt would argue here. He's not saying that it's no longer sovereigns don't act, but the difference is the magistrate. The sovereign creates the magistrate, but the, when the magistrate acts, it's a, it's not acting as sovereign. It is acting as magistrate for the sovereign. It's legitimate still by the sovereign, but it's not the sovereign who's doing this. And the magistrate is a particular will, and therefore can be, is not simply just. 
So that's the difference in this uh, in, in that aspect. It no longer acted as sovereign, but as magistrate. This appears contrary to the commonly held ideas, but you must give me time to present my own. Okay, this is, again, this is, it should be understood from this that what generalizes the will is not so much much the number of votes as the common interest that unites them. Because in this institution, everyone necessary subjects himself to the conditions he imposes on others and admir admirable agreements between interest and justice, which confer on common deliberation a quality of equity that vanishes in the discussion of private manners for one of common interest that unites and identifies the ruler uh, 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 and uh, uh, that unites and identifies the ruler of the judge, the, identifies the rule of the judge with that of the party. In other words, in other words, the, in other words, the, uh, this is the problem that, that uh, identifies the rule of the judge with that of the party. Therefore, that this is, in other words, for one of a common interest that unites them and uh, identifies the rule of the judge with one party versus the other party. Okay. So therefore, the, uh, uh, the general will is something that everyone is collectively generally benefiting. Uh, 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 it is something that is shared. And therefore, co which confers common deliberations, equality, equity that vanishes when it goes to private matters. It is no longer, in other words, something we don't have. Private matters is something where there's no common interest. There's no shared or common. There's money mine. And, you, uh, and we don't share it. There's no intersection of our interest in this situation. This is a private interest. The collective interest or the interest, the general interest is that things that we, our interests intersect and we all, everyone is in there, there's intersecting of that interest. So the, the area of where our interests intersect and in common that we share, this is can be the general. The private is that is when it doesn't. And therefore the sovereign has no authority over the private. That's what I, I, I take Rousseau is doing. And, and that's the distinction between what Rousseau says about a general, an act of the, the general will and what is commanded command by a sovereign versus what can be, uh, has to be done by a, ma a, a conflict of private will. And that's usually an act of the magistrate in this sense, right? So, however, one traces the principle, one always reaches the same conclusion that the social compact establishing equality between the citizens, such as they all engage themselves under the same conditions and should all benefit from the same rights. Thus, by the very nature of the compact, every act of sovereignty, which is to say every authentic act of the general will, obligates or favors all citizens equally, so that the sovereign knows only the notion as a body and makes no distinction between any of those who compose it. So therefore, this is so. Therefore, this is very important to understand this. That it's the things that's like as I said here. It's the, this idea that the sovereign affects that uh, everyone is being affected equally, or so they are sharing in the effect of it. Okay, they might not. The degree of the sharing may not be perfectly equal, but they're all either benefiting or being pun limited by it at the same time. Okay, you understand? Some might be more limited by others, so there might be some degree of difference of impact, but it's uh, but everyone is affected by it. Okay, it covers everyone. It's not being done for one and not the other. Okay, and this is the point about this. It obligates or favors all citizens equally. What is re what really is a sovereign what is really an act of sovereignty then the question is it not a convention between a superior and an inferior it, it is not a convention between a superior or inferior but a, a convention between the body and each of its members right a convention that is legitimate because it has the social contract as the basis equitable because it is common to all, useful because it can have no other object than the general good, by the general good is meant the good that all share, and solid because it has 
put force and the supreme power as is guaranteed. In other words, the power that is the collective entity is, uh, uh, and everyone's ability has the obligation to enforce it, is going to be tied to that thing. I can see everyone saying, oh my God, this is complicated. Yeah, it is very complicated. This is why, and this is what's very interesting about this in that sense. As long as subjects are subordinated only to such conventions, they do not obey anyone but so, uh, but solely their own will. And to ask how far the respective rights of the sovereign and the rights of the citizen extend is to ask how far the latter can engage themselves to another, each to all in each, uh, 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 each to all and all to each. In other words, this, this idea that everyone has this obligation, therefore it's this, this limit. And therefore the limit is, as long as subjects are subordinated only to such convention, they, they do not apply to anyone else, but only their own will. They, they, it's, in other words, the general will is their will. And to ask how far the respective rights of, of the sovereign and of the citizen extend, it extends as far as they themselves grant it. As, uh, as far as the latter can engage themselves to each other, each to all and all to each. They are limiting the body politic itself collectively limits it. This is, and that's what you have to get. Remember that point I made up earlier a second ago, that there's a distinction that, that, that what benefits must be that which common was shared to each. That the individual, that there is this, this well, the private interest. Here's my interest. The private person has an interest, the scope of that interest. There's the interest that we all share, that every one of these have, there is an intersect. The point where every one of their interests is an intersect with each other, all collectively, I mean, every one, that is the general will. Now, some of these may have interests that collective, but not everyone shares. So therefore, five or six, that, that's a, that is a, we talked about this earlier, this is a private interest of a group. This is kind of a faction or a subunit, right? They share an interest, but that's a private interest still. Okay. But still, there's going to be in a person, every, each individual is going to have an interest. Now, some of these people, some of them are going to have common of a group. But then the group, it, for it to be a body politic, needs to have a thing, a shared, a point of sharedness, an in, set of interests that are shared. Their survival, their security, their, in other words, that this is a very important thing in Rousseau, I think. I think this is a misunderstood thing in Rousseau, in a sense. Um, this idea that, uh, um, I think this is a more, maybe we should take, understand it in terms of this thing, of the scope of interest. And therefore we can see how he, what he says about this. It is apparent from this that the sovereign power, be it entirely absolute, entirely sacred, and entirely inviolable, does not and cannot exceed the limits of the general convention. And that every man can fully dispose of the part of his goods and freedoms that has been left to him by these conventions. So therefore, the bounds by the agreement, by the, what is the convention? The convention is the social compact. The social compact creates the bind, but what is the, why are we together? Why are we doing this? Why are we living? It defines the general will. It defines what is common that, that binds us together, that holds us together in that sense. And therefore, it also determines what is, what is, what is therefore under the obligation of the general of this thing we are obliged to, and what is left to your privates here, as a private person? Um, and every man can fully dispose of the part of his goods and freedoms that has been left to him by these conventions, so that the sovereign never has the right to burden burden one subject more than another, because then the matter becomes individual and the power is no longer competent. Now, the burden cannot burden, everyone must be burdened equally. Oh, oh, 
So therefore, uh, this idea of graduated income tax is for Rousseau is bad. Ooh! Rousseau, if Rousseau, Jean-Jacques would say, hey, these progressive people who argue that rich people should pay more than pe people who like less money, the argument is, well, wait a minute, what is benefiting? You should be benefiting to the degree that you should be all paying the burden equally. If this is a public good, if this is a road, the idea is that the, or, or school or some public service that is benefiting everyone, then who should pay? Well, everyone is benefiting, so everyone should pay equally. Oh, equally? That's unfair! No, it's... <laughs> I mean, this is very interesting in that sense that modern progressives are not following Jean-Jacques Rousseau's own argument here. Jean-Jacques Rousseau's point here is not for progressive taxation. It would, it would, it may be seen just, but no, it's it would. It, the idea of private, in his view, the idea of private. This is doing this is imposing a private will of one group over another and violates the whole idea of the social convention of equal benefit. That there is, if you're going to argue that there's no common, you're basically you're saying that instead of the benefit of common, this is going to benefit one group, that you're going to, one group is going to pay more than the other group. You're imposing one set of things higher. You're going to impose a burden on one group of people, and a higher burden than on another set of people. But it's, these people have more than the other people. Did the contract and the original contract did they give those people that right? Did they make it? Did they do that under the criteria of the agreement? If that was done under the agree the, the, the agreement, then it's no longer. It's you're interviewing. You're, you're inter the general will is interfering in areas of the private convention. So that's, it's, it, uh, you, can, you can, they can say there is a very conservative dimension in Rousseau here. Um, that I think people don't pay attention to as much. Um, so let's go. Uh, Freedom of the good, so that the sovereign never has the right to burden one subject more than another because the matter becomes individual and the power is no longer competent. Once these distinctions are, are acknowledged, it is also, uh, once these distinguish, distinctions are acknowledged, what distinction between that and those wills we talked about, it is also false that the social contract involves any true renunciation on the part of the private individuals. Uh, uh, that their uh, uh, private individuals that their situation by the effects of this contract is actually preferable to what it was beforehand. In other words, it is does not involve renunciation on the private private of individuals that their situ uh, uh, that their situation by the effect of this contract is actually preferable to what it was beforehand. But instead of an, of an alienization, they have only exchanged to their advantage of uncertain precarious modes of existence from another that is better and safer. In other words, the state of nature is not that this is, it's not requiring that, it does not require a true enunciation on the part of private individuals that their situation by the effect of this contract is actually preferable to what it was beforehand, the private thing. But rather, instead of an, alien, an alienization, what they, that they have lost, they have exchanged for an uncertain advantage for a certain one. A precarious mode of existence for another that is better and safer. The natural independence for freedom, natural independence is replaced for freedom. The power to harm others for their personal safety and their force, which others could overcome, for a right which the social union makes invincible. So this is the transfers. 
their life itself, which they have dedicated to this day, is constantly protected by it. And when they risk it for the state's defense, what they're doing, what uh, what they then uh, what they what they are then doing, except to give it back to the state what they have received from it. In other words, in other words, they receive the state the life. In other words, they've given. They, they, in other words, the state then protects them and secures them and gives them their security. And then what happens when they have to defend the state and sacrifice themselves for the state? What they're doing is merely returning what the state has given them. Again, that's kind of sounding like Plato's Crito, right? Socrates' argument of Plato's Crito. The argument of laws in Plato's Crito. What are uh, uh, they doing? What are they doing? What, sorry, what are they doing that they did not do more often when and with greater advantage in the state of nature? So what they are doing that they did not do more often and with greater advantage in the state of nature when waging inevi uh, 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 inevitable fights, they defend at the risk of their life that which preserves it for them. So therefore, in the state of nature, they fought and they, they, they did the same thing in the state of nature. And in the state of civil society, when they, sacrifice, they fight in order to, to save the state, they're doing the same thing. They're saving themselves. So therefore, they did the same thing in the state of nature, in that sense, the argument, right? They, 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 def, uh, they defend at risk of their life what they pres, uh, preserve from it. It is true that everyone has to fight, if need be, for the homeland. But as, but also, no one ever has to fight for himself. So therefore, they, in other words, that in this this thing, they have to fight for their homeland. But no one has to fight for himself. Don't we still gain a risk uh, by risking for something that gives us security, a part of which we would have to risk for ourselves as soon as the security is taken away? So therefore, this idea that that. You know, you don't have to fight. You don't have to fight for yourself. That if there's a situation, someone can attack you. There'll be others there to protect you. In that sense, the common entity. Uh, and when, therefore, you're fighting. When you fight to wage war, you're not. It's not you're losing something you had in that. The same principle in the state of nature. He's saying that it's not. There is a. There is a. It's that's, that's a very interesting argument explaining the contract, the way this is done, and what's being done, and what is expected of you. Um, it's it's because you you know why are you expected to sac fight for the things because you it's because you've agreed this is part of the agreement and that uh, others have protected you and secured your rights now it's your turn to deliver that because that, the, that the, the entity that secures and guarantees your right is being threatened or under attack and therefore you need to defend it um, uh, so that's the whole point. That is that we do uh, we don't we still gain by risking for something that gives us security, a part of which we would have to risk for ourselves as soon as that security is taken away. And it was even worse. That security, we oh, every one of us would be left alone to fight for our security. And so point. Now let's turn to the last thing we're doing, chapter five, on the right uh, 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 on the right of life and death. If we, uh, uh, on the right of life and death, if we ask how private individuals who have no right to dispose of their own lives can transfer uh, uh, to the sovereign or right they do not have, right? This is 50. Uh, I hate this. Okay. I'm put my... Now, this chapter is added to the final version, although it could be viewed as a gloss on his famous paraphrase discussed in Note 30, 37. Rousseau also presents a criticism of Hobbesian principle here. According to Leviathan, a man cannot lay down the right of restricting, um, cannot lay down the right of resisting them that assaults him by force to take away his life. That same may be said of wounds, chains, and imprisonment, right? As a result for Hobbes, the right of preser 
the self-preservation is damnable. If the sovereign commands a man, though justly condemned, not to resist those who assault him, yet has the liberty to disobey, right? This is that. However, Hobbes' principle gives rise to the possible claim that against military service, right? So that's that famous, there's a contradiction in Hobbes, that the right of alienization of this. So therefore, he's going to spawn here. This question appears hard to resolve only because it's put badly, it is badly put. Every man has a right to risk his own life in order to preserve it. It, it has it ever been said that he, uh, someone who jumps out of the window to escape a fire is guilty of suicide? Has this crime ever been impugned or so, uh, someone who dares, who, uh, someone who dies in a storm, although he was aware of the danger when it set off? The social treaty has the preservation of contracting parties as its end. Whoever wants the end also wants the means. Okay. You want the end, you want the means to achieve that end. And those means are inseparable from some risks, even some losses. Whoever wants, and this is why I think Rousseau is better than Hobbes in the sense, right? More, you know, saying, that, listen, ends and means, right? But understand this. Right? Whoever wants to preserve his life at the expense of others should also give it up for them when necessary. Now, the citizen is no longer a judge, uh, is no longer a judge to the risk to which the laws uh, uh, which the laws will that he has been exposed. And when the prince has said to him, it is expedient for the state that you should die, he ought to die because it is only under this condition that he has lived, uh, that he has lived in safety up to that point. And because his life is no, long, uh, is no longer only a fortune of nature, but a conditional gift of the state, so therefore, this idea that which one the thing your your it's your your life has been preserved, it's secured, it's been saved up to this point. Now this idea that the state needs you to die. Sorry, the, you know you need to go risk your life. Now, um, or because it's 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 good, and, and by good for the state is not be good the power or the elite. It's no, the state means the collective good, the benefit good, everyone's benefit in a sense. The death penalty. Uh, inflicted on criminals can be considered from approximately the same point of view. It is not, it, it, it is, it is in order not to be the victim of a murderer that a person consents to die if he becomes one. It is not in order, it is not in order not to become the victim of a murderer that a person consents to die if he becomes one. Under this treaty, Far from disposing one's life, one only thinks of guaranteeing it, and it cannot be presumed that any of the contracting parties is at the same time planning to have himself hanged, right? Besides, every offender who attacks the social rights becomes through his crimes a rebel and a traitor to his homeland. He ceases to be a member of uh, 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 its member by violating its laws. He even wages war against it. This is, this is, you know, Hobbes, you know, Rousseau sounds like uh, ooh, a law and order conservative here, right? You know, what you brought, you break a law, you break a law, you're a, a traitor to the society, you're waging war, and the society has the right to punish you, right? Uh, he ceases to be a member by violating its laws. He even wages war against it. Then the state's preservation is incompatible with his own. So one of the two must perish. So therefore, there's a war. So what was Rousseau's answer to like gang crime? Well, the police should go there and gun them all down. Because <laughs> they're waging war, right? Gangs in these groups, oh, no, no, you're waging war. Sorry. Oh, you're a drug dealing gang? Okay. <laughs> Why? Why? Because this is the... Uh, 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 the idea that, they're, that uh, you're harming us, you're at war, you use war, for, uh, the force must be applied. I, I don't think uh, lib liberals are not going to like this John Jacques No, 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 no. All right. Like, uh, he says what? The state's preservation is incompatible with his own, the criminals, right? So one of the 
too must perish. And when the guilty man is put to death, it is less as a citizen than as an enemy. The proceedings and judgments are the proof and the decorations that has been broken the social treaty and consequently is no longer a member of the state. Now he, uh, uh, now he has uh, uh, acknowledged himself as such. So therefore, that's the completion to cease. You resist. Bang, 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 bang. <laughs> uh, 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 stop in the name of the law. Remember the British barber? Stop in the name of the queen. Oh, ha, ha. And if you're a good citizen, you just obey, right? Even if you broke the law, and therefore the punishment. But if you resist, that's war. That's riot. And then the militia comes out and just guns you down. This is a kind of Rousseau. <laughs> oh, my God, he's a barbarian. I kind of like this John Jacques Rousseau, don't you? Uh, he's not longer a member of the state. Now, that he, uh, uh, now, as he acknowledged himself to be such, at the very least by his residence, he ought to be removed from it by exile as a violator of the compact or by death uh, as a public enemy. For such an enemy is not a moral person, but a man. And in this case, the rights of war is to be killed. Uh, uh, and in this case, the right of war is to kill the vanquished. But it, um, but it, it, it will be said that the condemnation of a criminal is a particular act. Agreed. Hence, the condemnation is not made by the sovereign. It is made by. It is a right that the sovereign can confer without itself being able to exercise it. All my ideas fit together, but I can hardly present them simultaneously. Moreover, frequent corporal punishment is always a sign of weakness or laziness of government. <laughs> Just punishing the body, freaking, this is laziness. I love this is a great Rousseau line. I love this. This is one of my favorite lines. There is no wicked man who could not be made good for something. One only has the right to put to death. Even, in, uh, even as an example, someone who cannot be preserved without danger. <laughs> Rousseau's attitude about criminals? Hang them! Punishing their bodies? No, 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 no. That's a lazy society. Uh, uh, no wicked man. Uh, there is no wicked man who cannot be made good for something. And one only has the right to put to death, even for an example, someone who cannot be preserved without danger. So if someone's dangerous, someone's too risky, you don't punish their body, you don't waste them in prisons and correcting them, you just execute them in a way that they're an example. Quick executions. Woo, Jean Chakra is so ultimate reactionary. <laughs> Law and order conservative. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> all these fanboy, these radical bread pudding, you know, the, all these Jean Jacques Rousseau wannabes, leftists, and don't understand uh, how reactionary he is in this point of view. This is this is hilarious in the sense, uh, but then again, you know the Jacobins are not there. They think a oh, political crimes only. This is this is for only, no 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 all crimes. So, oh, but but social justice poor people who are unjust. No 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 no. They violate the social. They steal people's private property. No 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 no. But there shouldn't be private property. So says. Eh, 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 eh. No, no, no. The contract agrees that some things are private, people private property. Rousseau is not denying, Rousseau is not saying private property is theft. He's not, you know, Padoon, Padoon, uh, you know, that, uh, uh, oh, property is theft. No, 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 no. Property is a contract, as Rousseau even says in the beginning of his famous discourse on inequality, right? It's an act. Uh, what what, what ha it, uh, it happens accidentally in the uh, uh, you know that first uh, some uh, pro we have what is it <sighs> private property emerges when someone says this is mine. Uh, society emerges when someone says this is mine, 
and uh, uh, and everyone agrees to it. No one says no about it, right? That's his idea. Um, with regard to the right of pardon, or the exempt, uh, or the exempt, a, or to exempt a guilty man from the penalty prescribed by the law and pronounced of the judge, this belongs only to the one who is above the judge and the law which is to say, to the sovereign. Yet it's right in this matter. Uh, uh, yes, it is right in this matter. It is not. Um, yet it's right in this matter is not very clear. And the cases in which it is applied are very rare. So therefore, pardon should be rare in a sense. In a well-governed state, there are few punishments, not because many pardons are given, but because there are few criminals. When the state declines, a high number of crimes guarantee their impunity. Under the Roman Republic, the Senate and Consuls never tired to never tired to pardon, tried to pardon. The people itself did not do so. Although it sometimes revoked its own judgment, frequent pardons indicated that crimes will soon have uh, will soon have no further need for, of them. And everyone sees where it lead, what that leads. In other words, frequent pardons indicates that crimes will soon have no further need of them. And then everyone sees where that lead. But I feel what my heart, okay. <laughs> I feel that my heart murmurs. I hold back my pen. Let these questions be discussed. Uh, uh, let these questions be discussed by the just man who has never transgressed and who never needs okay this is very funny because he knows that he's himself not i okay i'm not that perfect i know i better be careful um but his own principle is leading to an extreme situation that there should be no part pardon should be rare again he's a hanging judge he's you know this is again this is the most this section is the when I, when I first round when I read Jock, John Jock as a teenager, and I, I admit this was, the, this, I, I mean, it was uh, 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 this, was, I studied French also, but you know, when I read this translation, when this was published in 78, I think, or is it when it came out? Yeah, 78. So, yeah, this is the translation that I, I first read or so. And. I fell in love with John Jock at that. I'm not really, I, mean, I, I still like, I was a Burke and I, I like Burke and I always, I kind of followed that Burke and view that, oh, Burke, you're so is bad. You're so is bad. And I can see the problem for Rousseau. So he kind of is, he puts himself as this kind of revolutionary, this nature lover and this like this. But at the same time, it's passages like this that warms my, you know, I can see this is, this is like, oh God, this is a Rousseau who understands it. But at the same time, he knows that I, I would be careful. I better be, uh, I, I dare not say what my, I'm, my logic compelled to think. That is what the, a healthy state does not radically, you should do it. It's a question of this. The sovereign should do it, but it should be limited. It should not be because you, if you pardon too freely, that means the crimes will be, uh, more people will be, because uh, you'd be more and more, the sovereign is be more and more compelled to, do this. So um, uh, there should be few. It's not that there's few criminals, is but because that there's few criminals. You know, there's pun punishment not because it's pardons given, but the criminals are doing. The criminals are doing this because the laws. They know that they 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 are going to be punished immediately. And people say people say, well, uh, the problem with this view is that uh, to yourself. Is that the reason why death penalty is not a deterrent is because it's not immediate or quick. It takes forever, years before death penalty is committed. So you don't, you're not going to fail. But if you had a quick penalty, death penalty, oh, but some people were act irrational. Eh, but it's better that by, you know, as he says, that famous line cannot be good for something, even if it's going to be shown, even as an example. <laughs> okay this is okay um so we stop here 
you have any comments, questions, or concerns, please put it below. I'm sorry, I laughed so much at this. I, 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 I this is one of my points of Rousseau that I just, you know, the humor of him uh, uh, it, 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 and, the, and the logic of his argument just hits a nerve at sometimes. Um, please put your comments below, questions like this. If you liked it, like it, uh, 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 share it with a friend, share it on social media. Uh, if you didn't like it, okay, I can understand why you can say no, but uh, 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 but say why, which what, what, what are the problem that you had with the thing. Another thing you can do is, um, uh, uh, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Encourage others, you know, to, to join that you might be interested in to come join us and s subscribe. I like to build up my numbers some more. Um, uh, you can follow me on my social media links below. Uh, my also my academics social media links. So you can see my my my, my research and scholarship aspects and things like that. The link that below. If you want to help me do what I do, or, you know, contribute to this. You can do so through uh, uh, the uh, 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 being coming on Patreon or a, a helper through Subscribestar or Patreon. Um, of course, you say, "Okay, you know, this is." I know, I know. Okay, I, I, you're giving this away. This is free rider problem. I understand. Uh, the second thing is, if you want to help and contribute something, you can do so by buying a book, one of the books, my books below. If you want to help, buy it for yourself or buy it for someone you know. Okay, that's it. Uh, we go this Monday, Wednesdays, uh, uh, or so should be done this like this usually. Um, take care. I will see you around. Have a good day. Take care. Bye bye. See you next time. Next time we look at we'll start at, oh my God, it's going to be, I think we're going to be doing four through five, right? No, 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 six and seven. So take care. Bye bye.